Hi again and welcome to Coffee with Craig. These are one of my short little videos today. I'm just going to seed a few ideas with you. Let's say it's an espresso with Craig because it's a it's a short one. But I want to talk today about the future of oil. Okay, we all know that oil has caused a lot of damage in the world, hasn't it? I mean, it's caused many problems pollution wise in the atmosphere, in the oceans and all around us. Oil has been seen as a sort of a bit of a, a, a negative, really, because we're, we're saying to ourselves now we can't keep on producing energy from oil because it's too polluting and it causes too many problems. But my, I have some I have some thoughts about this and. and uh, I'm kind of swimming against the stream a bit with what I say here, to be honest. But I think we're, we're making some mistakes with our attitude towards oil, actually, because, yes, it does pollute. Yes, it does cause trouble. But the problem is it's in the wrong hands. The people that have control over the oil don't give a damn about environments. And it's been profit generated for a long time. Uh, and because of this, I think we're we, we're, we're making some mistakes because we're we're using oil basically in the wrong way. Now I went to I went to London um, the other day um, with Jane, and we um, met some lovely spiritual friends there, film producers up in Primrose Hill, which was a lovely lovely day. And but all the way there, most of the way through London itself was a kind of a twenty mile an hour limit. And I can understand why they want to do this. They, they think well that reduces the petrol fumes that creates a, a safer environment and it's you actually have to drive it quite a crawl to get anywhere in London and it was to be honest it's the first time I've really encountered it on a non-busy day in London because it's really hard to drive a car at 20 miles an hour um, because its natural speed wants to kind of naturally move faster than that so it's very very difficult and I actually found it more difficult to watch a sat nav and drive at 20 and all this focus of trying to keep below this level because of all the cameras and everything. I felt I was more dangerous to drive to other people than if I was just driving normally. You'd get the, the cyclists, for example, um, they have a kind of entitlement sort of attitude now. They, they're, some literate, they're, they're swinging in front of you deliberately to say, this road's mine, you know, and they all carry the GoPros on their, their helmets and things and have a really belligerent attitude to us all. And I, I hate the way they all dress in Velcro, you know. Uh, 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 what are you on the road for? Are you get into A to B or are you there for exercise, you know? And they, they don't obey any of the rules of the road themselves. Well, I saw it. They just nip across zebra crossings they onto the pavement off the pavement pull out in front of you no hand signals there's a real belligerence with it i don't know if you feel the same but it was so frustrating to drive that way and and dangerous i think not only for the cyclists but also for the pedestrians who 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 also will just step out into the road and it's is hard particularly if you're using a sat nav so i thought well that don't work to me that that don't work i don't think that's safe and I don't think that's wise. We should either have one or the other. We should either have no cars in the centre of London or no bikes, frankly, because I don't think the two can work together. I think you have to have one or the other. So I start thinking about it and, and, and I wanted to share with you some of the things that I saw in the past, too, from as I've mentioned before in previous videos about the future of energy and the future of oil and the way things are go. Because the way it's going at the moment just don't work. In London, we have a guy called Sadiq Khan, who's, to me, 
he's a person that hates Britain. He just hates, he seems to be full of hatred for everything that has been. He's very, very woke. He's expanded this, um, what they call the ULES expansion, which means that there's going to be um, congestion charges all over London now, pretty much all inside the M25 is going this way gradually. So the motorists are going to be punished constantly by a guy that I think has really weird agendas uh, and is a really strange guy with an awful energy, in my opinion. Um, I don't know what you think. What do you think of him? Um, I mean, and he's costing the Labour Party, which is the left wing of British politics, um, costing them votes because people are saying, well, I'm going out of business. I can't go to work. It's going to cost me a fortune every day just to drive my car. And everybody's supposed to jump on their bikes. And London is a big place. So it makes life very, very difficult, I think, for people. And I think this kind of double edged sword we got at the moment don't work. The problem we have, I think, is that people don't think big enough about these things. If we're going to do it, we're going to do it full on. And that means spending money and that means raising taxes and that means putting big, big um, taxes onto ordinary individuals. Now, people don't like that. But if we're going to do it, really, we've got to do it properly. We're going to have to make London a completely car free zone. It's the only way it would work. But you couldn't have a car free zone in London. It's got rubbish public transport. It's 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 old fashioned. It's out of date. It would got um, underground system that doesn't cover the whole of London. We've got a bus system that's pretty antiquated. We would have to really think big about putting in full on um infrastructure massive infrastructure i saw it in disney right okay disney's an exception it's a small area but if you go to disney in florida they'll get everybody out of the park in seconds by monorails by a transport that's bang on time uh, and so on that is the only way you're going to do it is have something on that scale all over london and you'd have to have car parks all around the m25 and maybe a circular railway system so people could get to these railways. Because I saw in the future huge, great developments being built over the top of railway lines. I, I had this kind of vision of seeing it was like railway station, middle of town, railways coming in from both directions and build over the top of it. That becomes your shopping complex. That's where you put your mouths over the top of the railway lines so that you can always get to a mall by railway. A mall is going to become the central point on a railway line. The railway line becomes the center of your hub network for all transport. From there, you can get taxis. From there, you can get buses. From there, they will become central points. Because if you're going to link big cities together, you've got to have a few central points. Haven't you? You've got to have a few points that you can say, I'll go to the main central station. I know I can get home from there. You know, So you have a number of these sorts of builder like a web, like a network. So I saw this happening. I think it will happen in due course. And I think we will get a situation where we can make the centres of towns completely um, driverless zones. And it has to be driverless because if you do this, there must be no exceptions. You must be not even exceptions for the disabled, no exceptions for the police, no exceptions for the politicians. It needs to be everybody. You need to have a system that can get people around without having to have any personal transport whatsoever and that's the only way we're going to do it because when we went to a um, vacation on to to italy you know we were going into abruzzo which is an out of the air out, middle of nowhere sort of thing you know and the choices of car hire um no way was i going to hire an electric vehicle because who wants to be stuck in a foreign country where you don't know where you can get a charge and when i actually looked around there didn't seem to be hardly any charge points around Italy, for example. So I don't think the electric car is a solution for this. You know, that could be outside of the towns. But I see kind of hubs. I see circular areas. You, you basically put, you plan your city. You put a circular um, network around the city and everything pulls in from that, like a mandala. It works like a mandala. So we need oil, meanwhile, because if you think about it, oil, it gives us our plastics and that's absolutely vital you know i mean we've had the age of stone age we've had the bronze age we had the iron age we've had the steel age with the industrial revolution and now we've got the plastic age 
And like at Olympia, we have got plastic and plastic is absolutely essential. But the problem is not the plastic. The problem is the misuse of the plastic, the use of plastic that's such one off usage. And we throw this very, very valuable material just into our oceans. So it's not the it's not the material, is it? It's the actual our use of it. And I would say the same applies actually to oil itself. Um, we can't have this half baked way of using oil. You know, we can't start saying, oh, we've got to get rid of oil. So we build windmills that only work when the when the wind's blowing or we can on, we, we can only use we can't even use nuclear power because that's dangerous. While we're doing this, other countries and in particular China are burning oil like there's no tomorrow. They're having their industrial revolutions. Look at the skies over Beijing, you know, absolutely choking filth. So while we're getting rid of oil and feeling all very good about ourselves and we're, we got all these smarty pants people going out that, that just stop oil campaign with some very immature thinking happening there. Very, very foolish. I think we could all agree they're idiots. Um, but meanwhile, you know, we just buy all our cheap products from China. They burn up all the oil and use all the resources of the world. And where does the money for that go? It goes to the Chinese Communist Party and, and, and to a system that we don't agree with. And what are we doing? We're sitting back and we're just using, we're just buying the same stuff, burning the same amount of oil in other people's factories. So it don't work, does it? So I think we've got to embrace oil, but use it wisely. Just as we need to embrace plastic and use it wisely, we need to take it out of our city centres. We need to spend big money, not just on a few cheapy old cycle lanes that nobody ever uses, because cycle lanes all around my town, I never see a cyclist on them. They're all on the main road in their Velcro, forget, well, not, not, not Velcro, if you know what I mean. Um, they're, 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 they're cycle costumes, you know. Oh, dear. And it's just frustrating for everybody. It becomes a problem. And all we've really done is push the problems of oil elsewhere. We said, look, India can burn it. So can China. So can all the third world. They're up and coming countries. They got to have it. No, it don't work like that. We've got to embrace. Our, we've got to have industries back. We need to become independent of places like China. Europe's got to become independent of China. America's got to become independent of China. We've got to grow our own economies too. And, and to do that, we have to have the energy resources. So we have to have things like oil. And I think we should take a pride in our countries. And I think we should take a pride in the industrial revolution that came out of Britain. I mean, without this industrial revolution, which, you know, William Blake saw the satanic mills and the choking filth of coal that we had then, Without the Industrial Revolution, we wouldn't have any of this now. You wouldn't have a screen in front of you. You wouldn't have technology. You wouldn't have um, any of this benefits that we have from the modern society without having had an Industrial Revolution. So we should look back at it with pride, I think. The whole of Europe should and the whole of America should and the Western world should say we actually gave the world something good. Right. It's making some mistakes. It is destroying the planet at the moment, but it's only the it's only because we haven't tuned it right. We're not using it in the right way. So I get really fed up with people who, who keep looking and tearing our nations apart and saying that we should all hang our head in shame, because I think we should be very proud of what we've all done, all the nations of 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 the Western world, actually, to, to create an industrial revolution and to create something that has um, made a, a, a mark in the world that is meant we can go to hospitals and know we're not going to be in terrible pain. We can have all the um, benefits of, of, of food and all that you know people in feudal times had none of you know so yeah so that's my thought uh, but i see for the future though i have said it a lot of times I mean what while we're doing the oil thing you know i i think we will eventually come up with a solution which is going to be based around energy that we can just get without any effort whatsoever it's worth as much we more energy we put in the more we get out um, we're going to crack something like cold fission or fusion. Um, we're going to we're going to work out a way to get zero point energy as it were. We're able to pull the whole universe is energy. It's madness that we can't get enough energy. It's all energy, everything. And yet we don't seem to have enough. And I'm sure we're going to find a way that's very, very simple to get unlimited, clean energy. We will find a way. 
Meanwhile, we've got to use the resources we've got and we've got to use them wisely and not put the, the power in the hands of the big companies, not put the power in the hands of other countries that are, misuse it. And don't think that we can, you know, have all what all the things we want and the benefits of the Industrial Revolution and let someone else do the polluting. Because you burn a, burn rubbish in China, that same atmosphere is going to bring it over here and into the same seas and the rest of it. But we shouldn't look at it and see that it's a bad thing. The right thing will come along. We will get a, a really powerful form of energy. I feel it's coming quite soon. I feel we're quite close. I was talking about this a few years ago, you remember, three or four years ago. I was going on about this. I was banging on about the fact that we're going to get some form of energy. They've made huge advances already. In theory, it's almost there. If they can do it on a small scale, they can bring it up to a big scale. We're so close, I feel. And I think we're going to get something like that very soon. And what could we do with that? We could have unlimited water for a start. We could desalinate the seas. We could green the Sahara. The Sahara used to be green through most of its history. It was a green paradise full of lakes and, and abundance. You imagine what you could do with just the Sahara. You imagine what you could do if you greened all of Australia. You know, it would change weather patterns and things in the world, but I'm sure we could work it out. And I'm sure we could not only feed the world, but we could have enough land left to be able to have major parks and things for the world. All sorts of wonderful things could, could happen with that. With unlimited energy, we could terraform Mars. We could put greenhouses on on uh, on the moon. You know, incredible things would be possible. Um, and it has to be the next step. It's inevitable. It's got to be the next step because I just feel evolution of humankind is happening, that it will always somehow overcome its environment and create greater, greater self-dependency. Maybe giving us one day the opportunity to be able to live away from the earth in the stars or even one day, perhaps even inconceivable things like living in the center of the sun or something like that. You know, who knows what's possible when the technology of millions of years hence uh, what it could do. Anyway, there's some food for thought. I hope you enjoyed that. And if you do enjoy it, do have a look at some of my books. Lots of good ideas in my books. If you want to read one, have a look at, for example, this is one of my favorites, Messages from the Universe. Have a look at that one. Lots of thoughts in there about the spiritual world, what it's like, what the purpose of human life on Earth is. Anyway, don't forget to follow the channel. See you soon. Bye for now. So do you like what I have to say? And do you like my work? Well, why don't you support my work? Have a look in the description below to go to my website, find out about psychic readings, find out about our Nadi readings with the Indian Nadi Oracle, buy my books and join my workshops online by Zoom. All there on the website psychics.co.uk.